You guys ever see on TV when they're in a hospital, and you got a patient that's bleeding out, and they scream out, we need more blood. Well, they're gonna do a transfusion on that patient. And you ever wonder how do they do that? They just hook up a line to a bottle and just let it smoothly go into a patient while they're bleeding out all over the place? No, they're gonna hook that patient up to one of these guys right here. Today, we're gonna to talk about rapid infusers, specifically the Belmont FMS 2000. This guy here has saved more lives than anybody can count. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Hey guys, welcome back. This is the Belmont FMS 2000. It's a computer-controlled, sensor-monitored, rapid-infusing system. The unit works by taking a sterile consumable set like this, which incorporates a sterile heating element embedded in the consumable set. This eliminates a lot of the problems with previous versions, which could have contamination hazards from the water bath. This system is a standard around the world. It's used by militaries, hospitals, you're going to see it in all sorts of operating rooms and emergency rooms. You'll even see it maybe on air transport units. The FMS has become a standard because it's compact size, it's got a battery backup system, and it's constantly monitoring the infused amount so that there's no mistakes. There's some pretty big advantages to this system over the old school system, which would be your level one. The first is that the level one system uses a fluid bath and the fluid bath has to get up temperature before it starts cycling at the selected temperature. This can create various problems with infection hazards because you constantly have stagnant water in a system on standby waiting for use. The FMS 2000, however, has a completely dry, sterile set. The set comes in two parts. The first is the reservoir, and the second is your tubing set. The tubing set is gonna load on the side here and the reservoir is going to hang on an IV pole and it's going to be fed by these Y adapters here to various blood products and saline solutions. The FMS 2000 has been out for quite a while now and it's become a standard but it's starting to show its age and the problem is is the manufacturer is now starting to pull back its support for this unit so we as biomeds are going to have to step up because it's still one of the best solutions for delivering blood products to your patients in a controlled manner. Let's take a look and see how the FMS 2000 operates. Here is where part of your cassette will get loaded and this is your fluid out detector. It goes across this peristaltic pump. You'll have two lines that run down. One of them is your main line. The other one is your recirculation line or your priming line. It comes up right here through your input infrared sensor goes around the induction heating coil and then it exits out here where it turns into the red line. This is also an infrared detector. It comes down here where your reservoir will press tightly up against this pressure sensor so it can detect both fluid out and whether there's an occlusion. Then the line will run down here and it goes through a bubble detect sensor and across this pinch valve. The pinch valve determines if the fluid is going to recirculate back around for prime or if it's going to exit out to the patient. One of the other things that you should know about this device is right here on the cover there's going to be a magnet which is going to match up to a sensor right here on the back of this panel. So when the door is closed and the latch is closed it will activate the device letting it know that a set is loaded. Next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to load a cassette into the unit. Here, you can see the little holder for the fluid out detector. We're going to press it into its spot. The tubing is going to roll over the peristaltic pump. It's going to come down to a 90 degree angle. The inductive coil is going to press in and you're gonna route the cable up through the infrared detectors both above and below the inductive coil. Next, you're gonna have your pressure chamber. 
it's going to press into this area and then right below it is the air bubble detector. Now one of the things we want to make sure is when we load a set to press the tubing into the air bubble detector because sometimes it can get pinched in the door. We're going to go around the pinch valve on both sides and one of the things we want to be sure of is right over here this tubing that loads next to the peristaltic pump which is your recirculation line there's a little hook right here on the door. We want to make sure that that hook goes around the recirculation line. Just like that. And it's loaded up, ready to go. This sterile set comes in two pieces. One piece is the section that loads inside the device. And the second piece is your reservoir. So what you do is you take your patient line that runs out of the bottom corner over here. We're going to run it all the way up here to your vent cap in the top of the unit. And what we're basically doing is creating a closed loop. Now mind you, this is not how you set it up to run on a patient. This is how we're going to set it up to test the unit. Here I've got one of the tubing Y pieces that comes with your sterile set. I have it pressed onto one of the fittings. And you can see here, I've got it stabbed into one of my bottle toppers. And this is going to be for my saline. The other line I just got clamped off and I might open that up if I need a little bit of ventilation while I'm filling. But other than that, all I'm going to use is this line right here. So I'm going to go ahead and unclip it. Here I've got a bottle of sodium chloride solution. I'm going to screw it on to my assembly here. And I'm going to let it fill up the reservoir. Once the bottle is in the reservoir, I'm going to go ahead and clamp off its leads and disconnect it. Now we're ready to turn it on and prime the set. The power cord to these units is pretty special. You can see that it's got an IEC connector on this end, but at the other end it's got the standard 16 amp 120 volt. So mind you, this is a special power cord. You can find them. I don't know the IEC number off the bat, but it is a standard power cord. The one that's often used with these has some locking levers on the side, to which this one doesn't have. You can tell whoever was using it last, they just silicone this, this socket in. But it's a special power cord, just to let you guys know, and it normally has some retention straps on the side that keep it from falling out, because you definitely don't want this guy to uh, quit working. Although, it does have an integral battery. We'll cover that later. So we're going to go ahead and turn the unit on and set it through its paces. We're going to give it a check out. You can see here it's got the old school monochrome style display. It does its pre-service checks and there was actually a button down here so you can go into service mode. First thing it's going to do is it's going to ask you to prime the set. So we currently have fluid in the reservoir. We're ready to rock and roll so I'm going to press prime starts out at 100 milliliters and it's going to click down from there. All right, it's ready to go. Now it's asking us to prime the patient line, which is this line that comes out down here. It's going to prime at a much slower rate because all we're trying to do is get the bubbles out and you don't want to be squirting blood and stuff all over the room. So it's gonna prime it at a really low rate, let's say 10 milliliters per minute. So we're gonna go ahead and prime it. You can probably hear it, it's, the pump is barely spinning back there. It's just enough to get the air out of this patient line. And then we press stop. Now we're ready to infuse. The default rate is 500 milliliters per minute, a half a liter per minute. That's actually kicking as it is but these units can either go up to 750 milliliters per minute, as you see here written right on the faceplate, or they go all the way up to 1,000 milliliters per minute, and that is just squeezing the fluid through. So what you do is when you are ready to go, you hit infuse, which is this button right here. It gives us our current temperature, which is 37.8 degrees C, and our current pressure, which is 100 millimeters of mercury. Our flow rate, 500 milliliters per minute, and our current output volume. You can set it up for a bolus if you want, but there's no need for that for us. 
If you pinch the patient line, it senses an occlusion. That is one of the highlights of this machine is if you have an occlusion on the patient side, it's not gonna blow out the patient's vein. The unit will sense that there's uh, increased pressure, it will stop it. You're supposed to either undo the line or make sure that your patient is stuck good enough with the needle, and then you can proceed. I can feel the line getting very warm. It's gonna get body temperature 37 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the infusion rate. We're gonna test it at its maximum infusion rate and its minimal infusion rate. The maximum rate is gonna check all the sensors and the pump to make sure that they can compensate and keep up. The minimum rate is actually gonna test more so the pump and make sure that the pump can handle pushing and squeezing against this tubing at a low rate. You're gonna get errors at your high flow rates, usually for sensors when they're starting to throw errors. And you're gonna have errors at a low flow rate, mainly for the pump motor, because it's gonna stall out. You see here, at the higher flow rate, we have 135 millimeters of mercury. Our temperature is 37.6 degrees. Excellent. Flow rate, 750 milliliters per minute. And you see what it's doing right there. Every once in a while, it kicks over the pinch line, which is right here. It happens once every couple minutes, the pinch We'll go over, it'll block off the patient side, it'll recirculate just to be sure that we get all the air out of the system, and then it goes right back automatically to recirculating to the patient. Now one of the features I wanna point out to you guys about this system is that the peristaltic pump is exposed on the back. It's gonna throw an error code because I pinched the line down there. But the peristaltic pump is exposed on the back. And one of the ways that we can calibrate this unit is by using RPM to determine flow. So you do not need a flow meter to calibrate this unit. We can actually do it with a photo tachometer and that exposed pump head. So that's the function of the unit. Next, we're gonna go ahead and crack the case open and get inside and see what makes it tick. The first step to unlocking this beast taking out the Phillips screws that surround the perimeter. The only ones that are difficult are the ones that are here in the trough. We'll get those with extensions. Once you get the case screws out, the next thing that we gotta do is we gotta pry this clamshell apart. Remember kids, flathead screwdrivers are not pry tools. I like to start right up here at this midpoint, pop it in, just give it a light pry outward, and what you're gonna do is break the silicone seal. There is also a rubber O-ring that goes in there, but more often than not, that rubber O-ring is long gone, and they've replaced it with silicone. So we're gonna go ahead and pull her apart. Once it's broke loose, I'm gonna lift the cover off. You can see that rubber O-ring I was talking about right here. The most important part of the inside of this device are these guys right here. These are your lead acid batteries. Remember, they have to be changed every three years. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the batteries. Place the cover off to the side. Some points of detail are gonna be your filter screens right here. These guys need to be cleaned with every PM. And then on the inside, the other thing that you have to take notice of is a coin cell battery. This guy is probably gonna to have to be changed about once every five years. That's gonna maintain your settings. Make sure your software doesn't get corrupted. Inside this beast, you'll see you have your main board down here. You'll have a display control board up here, which also has your CPUs on it. You have a power supply here, a power distribution and relay board on the back. And over here, these are the motor drivers for the peristaltic motor. Underneath this board, there's gonna be several points where sensors will plug in. So you have to be very careful if you ever have to remove this board. Right here, you can see a gear reduction drive on this motor. This is your pinch valve. And it just plugs in right there locally. You got some other sensors that plug in locally. Up here, I hope the camera can pick it up. 
this little guy right here is the motor that is controlling that peristaltic pump. You see the coils right here that come to the induction heater? They come up to a distribution block. One of the things that you'll have to worry about is right here. Look at this card if you ever open this up and look for signs of fluid damage. Because if this seal up here around the top ever develops a leak, you will get fluids that will seep in right here on this board and it'll make this board pretty much explode. So be weary that this is the most important surface of this entire unit to make sure it's sealed. And that is pretty much the inside of this unit. I'm not going to go into the PMs or any other details because that is a very, very detailed process and I suggest you follow along in the book. There is a service menu that walks you through the calibration. So take the time, read the manual and study up on this. And if anything, make sure you're properly trained before you service. But that is everything that's inside a Belmont FMS 2000 Rapid Infuser. I hope you like this video guys. Please like the video and give me a thumbs up. Share with your friends. And I'm not just saying that guys, I am trying to grow this channel. We have seen huge success lately and we are growing so rapidly. I'm trying to bring you guys the best content available. I'm not gonna walk you guys through PM processes because obviously those can change at a moment's notice with manufacturers, but I'm gonna bring you content that you've never seen before, and that's a promise, and that's my dedication to you guys. So thank you for watching, and stay tuned because we are constantly producing videos for you. Thanks for watching, guys.